I'm working on my Tascam uh, 112 Mark II. And I've got a little bit of a uh, capstan motor problem with it. So I'm going to take that out and take it apart and service it and see if I can take care of the problem. Uh, my issue on this one is I've got stable speed, but my flutter is varying quite a bit. I've got, oh, it varies between about 0.1 and, and 0.5 or, or 0.06. And it's not a, um, it's really an odd, an odd stability thing. So I'm going to take care of that or try to. I've already put a new belt on this. This is, a. uh, uh Tascam factory belt and I've had really good luck with these getting the deck down into spec anytime that I use these factory belts and this is one of the I think three decks that I can still get factory belts for and I had I had put a uh, aftermarket belt on it and I noticed this problem and so I was hoping that the factory belt would take care of it. And it got better by quite a bit. Um, actually a huge amount. But it didn't solve it didn't solve the uh, variation in the flutter. They've done a nice job mounting this. They've put it on uh, isolation grommets, which is nice. Yeah, pull that pulley off. Cut that shield. Do I want to cut that? Yeah, I think I want to cut that. <laughs> Take the shield off of there. Sorry, I'm just goofing off with a video. I'll pop the back off of it. Put in a vise, make it easier to work on. And I'll just uh, desolder those two uh, lugs that go to the brushes. And pop that PCB off. rest of the leftover solder on. Alright, that should just pop off there now. I'm fast forwarding through most of this video. It got really, really long. 
And so I'm just trying to <laughs> cut back a little bit on how much time these take. Uh, I hope it doesn't bother anybody. I, I don't mind it fast forwarding through things. When I watch videos that people fast forward through, I kind of enjoy it actually. So I hope this is good for anybody watching. So the commutator looks really good. It's clean. It's not grooved. It doesn't have a lot of buildup, a lot of, it actually just doesn't look that bad. The brushes, on the other hand, are quite worn. There's a lot of debris in there. A lot of carbon buildup. And it looks like quite a bit of wear. I don't think I got it on video, but the bearing was also more or less not seized up, but it wasn't movable. I had to really get in there and clean it and oil it before I could get a normal movement out of it. So I've just separated the brushes with a little, just a little bent wire that fits in there nicely. Cleaning them with contact cleaner that is non uh, residue and this actually took quite a bit of time I had to do multiple cleanings and really just scrub it as much as I could soak it, scrub it, soak it, scrub it I didn't worry about getting the contact cleaner on that bearing and having it dry out the oil because I ended up uh, soaking that bearing, oh, I think two days before I got back to it. And it had almost completely absorbed all the lubricant that I'd put in there. So that was fine. Now on the commutator, I'm going to uh, just get a little pick in between and clean those out, clean out the grooves. And they, kind of hard to see, but they did have, they did have stuff coming out of them. And on this one, I'm not going to put this in the lathe because it's really in good shape. I'm just going to give it give it a polish I'm starting out with 3000 grit I finish out with 7000 grit um, the right way to do commutator is to turn it because you don't want to get abrasive grains in that copper embedded in this case the most it could embed is 3000 grit grain and that would not hurt those brushes at all in fact Looking at them closely, it might actually help them if it abraded them a little bit and cleaned them up. But normally, I would, I would just turn this. So I went 3,000, 5,000, I think 7,000. And really just a polishing job is all I did. They surprisingly, surprisingly undamaged, ungrooved. They just look, they look fine. Now, I'm always keeping this rotated. 
uh, you really can't sand a circle. But in this case, I'm, my grit is so fine, it's almost like hitting, hitting it with a piece of paper. So, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, clean up the PCB. I did check the ESR on the capacitor, it was fine. Even though I've already lubricated that front bearing, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to do it again. And I am aware how rough my fingers look here. <laughs> this isn't dirt. Uh, this is tomato season. And uh, anybody that works around tomatoes and that sort of thing knows how the stain gets on your hands and it doesn't come off until tomato season's gone. So <laughs> that's what that is. It's not, uh, it's not grime or dirt. It's just stain that doesn't come off. Pop that back on there. Rotates nicely. Let's give it a test. You can't see it turn in the video, so I just put a little bit of Sharpie on there and turn it slowly and then uh, slow down the video. It's turning good. I was getting really low 
uh, amperage on this something like 0.2 it was very low so it looked good and then I uh, of course I stressed it and amperage looked good Clean the pulley with some IPA. Put our shield back on. Cut the ends of the leads and get a fresh, a fresh start on it. I tin them. I bend the leads over. I clean the flux off. That one's giving me a little trouble. And I get it back together here, and of course, my camera stopped recording, and I lose a bunch of footage with the final tests and, and all that. So, they flew away on me, and that's okay. I'm just going to finish this up with a slideshow of the upcoming video, which is already taped. I just need to edit it, and... Uh, get it up there and so in the next video uh, I'm going to be removing the head and lapping it and doing some modifications in terms of damping and uh, resonance on the deck and uh, shielding and so thanks for watching this one and I, I hope you watch the next one thank you